Hey, what's up guys? Adrian, the Vermont Outdoorsman here. Going to be episode two of my gear series, where I'm going to share with you something that's completely new to me. Uh, still in the box even, haven't even opened it up yet, so super excited for that. Uh, I just want to make it known that this is not a paid endorsement by any means. This is just going to be an opinion and unboxing piece about some new equipment that I'm going to be carrying in the woods with me this year. Let's get right to it. So inside this inconspicuous looking box is the last major item I needed to pick up to be a true three season deer hunter in Vermont and New York. Uh, the last two years I've used a loaner, which I've been super appreciative of, but I finally decided it was time for me to uh, get my own muzzle loader. So let's, let's jump right in here. So here we have it, the Patriot from Woodman Arms. Uh, the Patriot is a young buck to the smoke pole world, designed in-house by Mark Woodman in 2010. Uh, Woodman Arms is based just down the road in Fremont, New Hampshire, and produces the Patriot today largely the same as it was when it was first released to the public. So let's take a look at what's actually in the box, and then we'll get into some of the details surrounding the, uh, the muzzleloader. So obviously the muzzleloader comes disassembled. I won't go into the details of how it gets put together, because anyone who has seen a firearm review on YouTube knows how much YouTube tries to censor that. So I'll just say it goes together in seconds without any extra tools or equipment than what you see in front of you right here, right now. Uh, looking actually into the box now, we see we have an owner's manual, which I highly encourage everyone reads every time they get some new type of equipment, especially muzzle loaders. We have both the barrel here, the stock or lower, for lack of better terms, a set of scope rings provided by Woodman Arms specifically for the Patriot rifle. And finally, we also have a breech tool for uh, removing the breech, breech plug and the... Uh, from the back of the muzzle loader. Uh, packaging is good, it's to the point. Everything is wrapped up nicely, secured in my opinion. Uh, I like what I see so far. So, starting with the barrel, slip it out of the bag, take a look, see what we got. Uh, I guess we'll start on the front of the gun. Uh, we've got a spot here for a bead. You can have that left off at the factory if you're gonna be adding a scope, which I am. Uh, we move down the barrel, we see the forehand is a bit differently shaped than most firearms that I've held. Definitely feels a little different. Has kind of a more slender midsection here toward the back, which uh, I think really is gonna balance the gun well when it's fully assembled and definitely gives it the feel of kind of an all day carry gun. Uh, the ramrod that we have here, it's a pretty standard aluminum ramrod with a brass end on it. Not gonna scratch or damage your barrel as you're loading. Uh, I think the finish of the whole unit externally is great. Uh, it's clean, there's no scrapes, no scuffs. All the contact points for the hardware are all very solid, which I think is awesome. There's no slop in anything. Uh, but what I really want to talk about is what's inside the barrel here. Uh, probably won't be able to see much from it, but you're gonna have to take my word for it. You can also go to their website if you'd like. Uh, it features a melanite coating, which I've been told from multiple sources that I trust eliminates the worry for corrosion. And in addition to the lack of corrosion concerns, if you use the recommended powder, this stuff right here, Blackhorn 209, you can shoot more than the usual three to five times without the barrel fouling which makes the sighting in process and time at the range more enjoyable instead of a speed cleaning event. So that's the barrel, not bad. Let's uh, move on to the stock. Grab this out of the box here. Bagged up the same way. I like it, nothing wrong with that. Bagged a little tighter. So pretty standard rifle stock in terms of components. The attachment point for the barrel is up here at the front. This acts as the pivot point for the action to insert the primer. Moving down the stock, it's typically thinner the whole way through, uh, especially into the back or the comb of other similar sized rifles that I've held before, but this keeps with the lightweight theme. Uh, on the underside of the stock, we also have an oversized trigger guard, which is a fantastic idea for these cold Vermont December mornings during muzzleloader season. Uh, within that, we also have the trigger safety, pretty standard red or not red. And we also have this neat little feature here that is a chamber indicator, and this indicates the status of the firing pin. So if it's red, like it is right here, it's uh, cocked, and if it's depressed or black, it means it's uncocked. So you may be thinking right now that something's missing, but uh, don't worry, we'll come back to that in a minute. Awesome. Primary components of the, uh, the firearm down. Let's uh, grab the scope rings out and see what we got to work with those. So. As I was saying, I'm going to be adding an optic to my muzzle loader. So mine came with a set of scope rings as requested. These come in either a 30 millimeter or a one inch format. So pretty much any optic of your choice is going to work with this. Uh, the finish on these looks great. 
I'm told they're made in-house by Woodman Arms as well, so it's totally their, uh, their technology, their design. It also comes with uh, the mounting hardware necessary to attach to the uh, muzzleloader. Super excited to get this all set up. So let's put these aside and uh, grab the last thing that's in the box here. Breech plug wrench with looks like some kind of adapter to fit uh, the recessed breech plug. Nothing, uh, nothing too wild or fancy there. Looks like it'll do the job. So as I was saying earlier, something looks like it's missing that you may recognize from most traditional inline muzzleloaders, such as a hammer. Where the Woodman Patriot differs from any other muzzleloader I've seen on the market is that it's actually a striker fire system. And this was done to seal the firing system from the elements. Mark designed this firearm with the Big Woods tracker in mind who requires the best performance out of their equipment, which all but eliminates the possibility of water or grit entering the action. This system inherently also makes the, the rifle lefty capable without any modification, and that is hugely underrated and appreciated in my opinion. All that has to happen is the safety has to get spun around. So let's see how the striker fire system works. If the gun were not cocked, which you can tell mine is, you would be able to depress the front of the trigger guard here, and that would open the rifle. However, uh, to do this in my case, because the gun is technically cocked and you're not supposed to dry fire it per Woodman's uh, recommendation, you have to depress the firing pin button like so, and that allows you to then push in. As this is happening, the... Uh, you'll notice that there's kind of a wall that you hit with the, the front of the trigger guard as you're pressing it back. This is what releases the action, opening up the gun so you can then insert your primer, pull your breech, whatever. Pushing it past this wall is what actually cocks the action inside the firearm. Once that's done, you can let that fall back into its forward position place, load your primer, open up your breech, whatever you're doing, and then cock the gun back in its position. So the other part about this that for me was a genius idea is the fact that requiring this button to be pressed to open it once the gun is loaded means that you're not going to have the gun break in half on you while you're just carrying it. If the front of this trigger guard gets bumped, gets caught on a buckle or something on your backpack or whatever. Uh, great design. I really applaud Mark for this. So one other thing to talk about are the customization options of the Patriot uh, right from Woodman directly. Uh, first one I want to talk about is the stock. You can get this in three different materials. A laminate, which I have here. The laminate can come in four or five different colors, I believe it is. Or you can also get it in the more traditional walnut wood uh, for someone that wants a more traditional look. Or you can get it in the premium walnut, which is a really tight grain. It's beautiful looking, but the added cost uh, wasn't of interest to me. Uh, other things that you can get customized on the stock are the actual pull length or draw length of the gun. For people who have, you know, a longer or shorter draw, this makes the gun really accessible to anyone who's going to go out and use it. Um, another thing we can talk about real quick in terms of customization is the barrel or chamber, caliber, cartridge, whatever you, uh, whatever your term of choice is. Uh, I opted for 50 caliber which call me old school, but I like a big block of lead to go in the air instead of a, uh, a fast one. Uh, because of that, there was only one barrel option for me. If you go with the 45 caliber, I believe there are four different barrels and these come in all different lengths and twist rates to uh, help you really hone in whatever bullet you uh, choose to use. Uh, the final customization I wanna talk about is obviously one I spoke about earlier is the peep or the sight. They can either install a peep from the factory or you can get it left off for uh, your scope of choice, which again, I said, came in uh, two different size scope rings. So, likes and dislikes. Uh, gonna be pretty short as of now, because again, I wanna emphasize that I haven't shot the gun yet. Uh, it took me a while to find some of this stuff right here, the Blackhorn 209 powder. If you're thinking about picking a Woodman Arms Up gun and you can find this stuff on a shelf local to you, pick it up. Now, it is very sporadic when they're shipping and very hard to come by. I also haven't had a chance to mount my optic yet, uh, but once we get around to that, definitely gonna put some rounds down range, getting it sighted in. We'll do a full review at that point. Uh, out of the box impressions though, fit and finish of the gun is absolutely beautiful. I, I can't say it enough just how good this gun actually looks and how all the components fit together. There is zero slop anywhere. You can just see the care that Woodman and his team put in uh, to getting these together and out the door. Applaud them for that. I think that's something that's really underrated in uh, today's society. The other thing I want to talk about though real quick is the balance of the gun. So if I put my hand right about in the middle where that nice little cutout is, 
in the stock, you can see the gun balances very well. I applaud them for, uh, in my opinion, what makes this a true tracker's gun. That balances well. It's not nose heavy. It's not tail heavy like some of these other larger rifles can be. But uh, this is a gun that's definitely built to be carried all day. And uh, I'm super excited to be able to do that uh, this fall, this winter, uh, when I get around to taking it in the woods with me. So, dislikes. Uh, very short list. Um, actually, they really don't even relate to the gun itself. Uh, the first one for me is the breech in the gun. So, most breeches in the muzzleloader world now that I've seen are turning into these 90 degree easy out breeches. Uh, I think that's an awesome feature. Lets you pull your breech out in the field much easier than having to fumble around for a tool or something like that. Uh, I just really feel like that's the way the industry is going. I'm sure there's a reason that this one has to be uh, integrated more, you know, recessed more into the actual stock or the block here. But uh, that's just something I'd like to see on future iterations if there ever is going to be a change that's going to happen. That would be the big one I would make from the start. Uh, the second thing I don't like about it is the actual breech plug tool. So the tool comes in two pieces. It's got kind of the wrench fixture and then a socket. Uh, that socket, if that goes into your pack or, you know, into your toolbox, that could disappear very quickly. Uh, I'm not saying it's like a 10 millimeter and it's going to disappear just by looking at it, but um, that's something in my mind that this should be a one-piece unit. Uh, that's just less problems to be had right there. Uh, like I said, short list. So uh, let's uh, do some final thoughts here. And, uh, yeah. So, at a glance, unboxed, that's what I got. Like I said, I haven't shot it yet. I haven't put my scope on it yet. Uh, we'll report back with a more formal function review when we get to that point. Uh, as I've probably already said, I'm super excited to be carrying this in the woods with me in both Vermont and New York's muzzleloader seasons. Can't wait to uh, have the opportunity to take a deer with it either. Uh, you'll probably see an episode on that as well at some point. Uh, if you want a Woodman Arms of your own, you can head to their website. The website has all the customization options that I listed earlier. Or you can go to the distributors page and locate a distributor that's local to you. Uh, order it through either source, by all means. Um, I will note that it took me about nine months to get mine in hand from the time I placed my order. So if you want one for this coming muzzleloader season, it's probably too late unless you're able to call around and find someone that already has one on the shelf. So with that said, uh, thanks for watching. It's been a thrill to share with you the Patriot from Woodman Arms, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the woods. Take care.